Hello and welcome to Schoolscape Premier 2022. Secretly, don't tell anyone in the morning session. If you're from the morning session, you're also here. I'm going to apologize up front, but this is our favorite session by far. We feel like we could have a little bit more fun in the afternoon because it's mostly teachers and we find teachers to be lots of fun. Um, but yeah, we're so excited to have you here with us um, today and for the next two days of this event. We almost, almost, well, maybe we even just try to consider moving away from virtual and we had this out, uproar, outcry yes. from many, many teachers across the country that kind of said, please don't leave us behind because we don't live in Cape Town or Joburg. So we're still here. We're going nowhere. We're so excited to have everyone online today. Yes. And do you want to jump into what's yes. happening? All right. So today we've got a jam-packed day. Um, we actually have a co-host. Yeah. Not uh, me. Not you. You are <laughs> one co-host. But we, uh, Lorato from St. Stidians is going to be jumping on soon as a co-host. She is going to help us. She's actually going to do a session as well. Uh, we've got one of my most exciting teachers on later because he is my kid's teacher. So I'm really excited to see him. No and here. we're also going to dive into a school that has completely changed the way they do technology. And what's really exciting and inspirational is that this school is a low fee paying school. So I think this is going to inspire everyone. And then right at the end, we've got coding and robotics. In between, we've got plenty of prizes up for grab. And not um, to forget one of our most important. He will be very cross. Best you bring him on and say sorry. Ashley, Lawrence, uh, you can join us on stage. So um, before we get into Lorato's session, um, we're going to ask Ashley just to come on stage and say hi. Um, I think our technical guys are going to have to do right click and ask him to turn on video. Ashley, are you there? I am here. Can you hear me? Oh, there there we can <laughs> see you. All right. Um, everyone, this is Ashley Lawrence. This event is really possible because of incredible sponsors like Sonic Wall that make it happen. So, Ashley, in a nutshell, uh, why are you involved with this event? Why is Sonic Wall involved? Well, Schoolscape is the perfect platform for us to take our story, our cybersecurity story to schools. Um, it's a trusted platform and it's not based on what we say, it's based on what our customers say and what our partners say. So in the, to quote your phrase on, on the site, you know, don't take my word for it, take the school's word for it. And we've got case studies. We had this morning session with Louise Lemmer from Toti High. We've got new case studies out. Um, this, this last week, um, which we launched in Cape Town, and we actually have another speaker um, from the newest Cape, uh, case study speaking on Friday at the Joburg event. So yeah, we like to do this because we want to protect our schools and we want to use you guys because you're the perfect vehicle for us to get to all the schools and kind of drag them kicking and screaming into the uh, into the into the future of cyber security and boundless cyber security the world of cyber security is that what you but said <laughs> i think on that the good news is um we're actually going to bring on a cyber security yeah. expert later just to share a bit more about how to keep your learners yeah. safe so ashley sonic wall we love you guys thank you yeah. for your incredible support uh, for all the companies out there we're going to hear a little bit more about sonic Wall later but we just wanted to show you Ashley's amazing face because he is the person <laughs> that is helping make this event happen uh, with a couple of other sponsors. So Ashley, thank you so much. Um, we'll Thanks guys. All right. Awesome. Okay, so I think uh, there's only one thing to do now and that's invite our first speaker and our co-host yes. Lorato on stage. So Lorato is gonna jump on and I think um, part of the heart behind this event is real teachers, yeah. real schools, sharing the solutions they use. And I think that's where, you know, we've had Lorata on stage once or twice before, and she's blown us she's away. She's dynamic. That's the best word I can explain her. She is dynamic. All right, Lorata, are you there? Let's see what our technical guys say. I wish you could see the picture this side. We've got technical <laughs> Hello, there. everybody. Hello. Yes, All teachers right. are the best. This session is the best because of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. Well said, Lorato. All right. So, uh, Lorato, um, by way of introduction, so everyone knows, Lorato is at St. Stibians. She's involved with everything to do with edtech, with implementation. Um, and I think what she does, which is really awesome, <clears throat> is she goes and finds innovative tech. And she's bold and she tries it. And that's why we want her on stage yeah, to share. So I think, Lorato, um, before you help us co-host, Shane, we really are making you work hard here. Uh, the next <laughs> I love it. 10 to 
<laughs> the next 10 to 15 minutes are yours just to share the cool tech that you are using that you want to inspire the other teachers with. Oh, and sorry, uh, for all of our teachers, you said hello in the chat bar. Please say hello. Please add comments. Um, mm -hmm. Best comment of today is going to get some really cool prizes. We have so you... many prizes to give away. We are inundated with prizes. Yes. Like I keep so we've got air tags, felt skin branded. We've got Wi-Fi range extenders. Golly, it just keeps on going. So, yeah. uh, but before we get to that, uh, Lorato, we want to give you space to share. So we're going to hand you. over to. You. We're going to be in the background, hopefully with some videos that are hopefully going to work when you cue us. Uh, but the stage Don't is back yours. us, back Lorato, back us. They're going to work, Lorato. We promise. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. And hello, this is very exciting for me to be back here again. And I would do this over and over again because of my love for what I do. Um, and all you wonderful people out there who are watching, I got such wonderful feedback last time, just sharing some simple apps and just sharing my love and passion for everything that has to do with technology in the classroom. Today, I wanted to talk about where I get my inspiration from. I get my inspiration from the kids, and I'm talking about my own child and the kids that I teach. The inspiration comes from the talk, what they talk about. The inspiration comes from the movies they watch. The inspiration comes from how they play with the devices. As adults, I think sometimes we tend to lose that spark and lose the fun. But I swear to you guys, just give your kids a device and watch what they do with a simple app. They go deeper, they find innovative ways and they find it like they, they just go in with no limitations. And that's what I love. So I have an eight year old daughter who's actually my, <laughs> my guinea pig and my muse, <laughs> but I give her the iPad and she plays. She makes videos, she likes creating content and that's where today's talk is gonna be mainly about. I'm mainly gonna be talking about um, in the classroom and um, how I use animation, which has become a huge, huge, huge part of my, um, my teachings. So I am going to be sharing my screen. Okay. So welcome, and today it's Epi Day, animation in the classroom. My kids helped me name this because we always talk about apps like you know how can we talk about creating apps we talk about um new apps that come out we do app research and all of that so in my classroom i don't limit the kids to one thing we code we we develop apps we play with apps we research apps we make apps we everything that has to do with technology and Hashtag girls can code because I do have a girl child and I do teach in an all girls school. I'm at St. Stidian's Girls Prep and my girls from grade three to seven are exposed to all of this. Now, this is where people are like, oh, but maybe the little ones won't be able to. They can and they will. And I say this because believe it or not, guys, <laughs> my favorite grade is grade naught and one because I've taught grade naught and I've taught a grade 10 child. The grade naught child is not scared to go in to really explore the app. So that's what this is all about. So how the animation came about, I believe in these four. And I always talk about these four words. They are the main core of my teaching. We, in the classroom, we live, breathe these four Cs. And they are very important for me and the students because in my space, I want to allow for creativity, for collaboration, communication, and coding. And in my space, all these Cs don't just happen for me or in my space. Like I'm not just a tech teacher. It happens because I've, the, the, in maths, the children were learning something, um, Pi Day, um, in science, they wanna build volcanoes, in DNT. So I want the kids to bring the other subjects into the lesson because those as teachers and we're not, we, we shouldn't be isolated as the techies of the school. We should all be under one umbrella and the kids, I allow for my kids to say, Ms. Shooping, this is the project we have going on. And then I'll collaborate with the teacher to come up with something awesome um, for the kids or how the kids can express themselves. And what's very important to me, and I'm talking from grade naught all the way to matric, we all need to remember our kids are different. 
Some kids don't like to stand in front of the classroom or maybe they shy away when you actually just have them do a straight up PowerPoint. Maybe sometimes they need to express themselves in a different way. And that's where communication is, 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 I mean, a podcast. You can do a podcast. They can make a movie. We can allow for our kids to express themselves in every and any way. My little ones, I look for apps that allow for them to share their voice and to act. I mean, these kids will shock you. In my coding lessons, so um, for the past till half, since um, the beginning till half term, we've been focusing a lot on coding vocabulary. And these kids had to, you had to just make a presentation for Ms. Shooping to understand, you know, to explain your understanding. And they chose different and amazing ways using the apps that I'd already introduced. And some kids who hardly say boo to me showed me the most understanding. So don't limit your students. And their creativity is endless and it's limitless. And like I said, explore it in other classrooms, explore it in other lessons. And my favorite is the collaboration collaboration with other class, classes, other schools, international and national. Some of us here, why don't we collaborate? Why don't we get a pen pal thing going? There is so much that the kids can share and I am absolutely all about that. Now, my favorite, 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 favorite apps that I'm currently using for um, animation. And I use these from my little ones to my big kids when they explain a concept. And I realized that in the classroom, the, 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 the talk that comes out is um, uh, mainly, you know, this movie that we watched or in this movie. So Bruno, we don't talk about Bruno. I don't know how many of you guys and parents out there have been listening to Bruno. <laughs> so movies inspire me because then I talked to the kids. I was like, well, did you know that that was used you know, for animation. But then why don't you use animation to show your understanding in a certain, in, in, in a certain subject? And Keynote is my go-to for everything. Flip a clip, oh my word. And I'm gonna show you a video now. This was done by a grade two child because I want you to see that from littlies all the way to big kids, the creativity is endless stop motion and because i teach coding and robotics i want to make it fun i want i i want them to enjoy explaining concepts i mean algorithms are big words for our little kids i want them to have fun let me just stop sharing for a bit i want them to have lots of fun in the classroom learning these apps developing these apps even when my little ones come up with app ideas so right now the fun thing that i'm doing my grade sevens have to make a game for their grade three buddy and what we did is we incorporated digital citizenship we incorporated movies that are like hot right now and we looked at and i it was interesting the one game that they played, um, it, it, it's my favorite game. It's called Be Internet Awesome. And I would suggest adults, families, all of you guys play it. It's free. It's on. It's a Google um, web-based app that teaches digital citizenship. I got my grade threes to play and they whizzed through the lands. It's awesome. Interlands, it's interactive. It's read. My grade sevens really struggled, which shows that we need to get our kids excited in things like these again. That's why I'm all for our girls coding, our girls expressing themselves. So I challenge you all today to find Be Internet Awesome and let's see how Internet Awesome you are. And I bet you your young kids and your little ones are going to Zoom past it. And that's why I, we in the classroom. Think of yourself in the classroom and finding ways Take their outside world and bring it in the classroom. And don't be afraid. Watch those movies. Sing the We Don't Talk About Bruno over and over. Get sick of it. And that's where your ideas and inspiration will come from. Okay, I could go on and on, but let me share no, the one yeah, video. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, Lorato, just, do you want the short video or the long video? Um, I'm just going to share snippets of both. So the, the one with the green background first, just so they can okay. see. Cool. And, and this was... Lerato, um, well, while we're pulling that up, uh, we've actually got a set of air tags up for grabs. So if you don't know what an air tag is, it's like a little, looks like a key ring. You shove it on something, be it 
a bag, a laptop, a phone, or well, you don't need it on a phone, your car, wherever, and I'm you can track it. <laughs> yeah, you lose your phone of it, and you can track it. So it's amazing little bit of Apple tech. So we're asking all the schools, what the favorite bit of tech or app you use in your classroom? And then right at the end, Lorato is going to choose what she thinks is the coolest one, uh, the coolest nomination, and that person will win those air tags. Heidi so, wants to know if she can put yes! on her husband. Heidi, you can put on Heidi, your Heidi, no. I, I, I found a new key ring on my on myself the other day. I think the wife was in it. No, just. Uh, all right, uh, are we going to cue that video? Gents, how are you doing with our video? Here it comes. These are all the amazing women from different countries who came here to show that they're great at sports. I hope you enjoy my, my Women Olympic show. Enjoy! The first woman at the Olympics is a team move. She was an athlete for USA. Nick, the next one is my favorite gymnastics girl, Simone Biles from USA. Alrighty. We can actually stop the video right there. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to show you guys. So the grade twos were given a theme around the Olympics. And, you know, my daughter was one of the girls who we were online and she was absolutely obsessed with the Olympics and she kept seeing all these women. And so when we got back to school, my theme was the Olympics. And look what an amazing video the kids made. Now, when I tell you awesome teachers, Think about it. I mean, I, I have about, what, 20-something kids in a classroom. I showed these kids once. We played with the app, and then they go off on their own to make their own videos. Um, whatever theme it is, I trust my kids, and I tell them to trust themselves because it's they finding inspiration. It's their voices that I want to hear. They are showcasing their work. It's not Miss Shooping saying, mm, why don't you delete this? Why don't you delete that? I will guide them and support them but I trust them and I am really into encouraging them to trust themselves and videos like that. I mean, that was absolutely awesome. And I don't know if anybody from Think Ahead is here, iSchool Africa, um, I, I mean, iStore Education, uh, but yeah, she actually ended up winning in her category. And I can see why, because like I said, it was because she enjoys anything that is animated and that was the best way for her to express herself. So I'm going to say it one more time, collaborate, allow your kids to be creative in the classroom, allow for lots and lots of communication and code. Everybody can code. If you follow me on my uh, social media platforms, you'll see my hashtag. My favorite hashtag is hashtag everyone can code because we can and we need to start teaching our kids right now. And that's it from me. <laughs> Man, that was cool. Um, uh, I, I like it that the, the kids are so involved and it just amazes me what kids can do with yeah. technology. And I'm glad you mentioned um, uh, the guys from iStore, previously Think Ahead, just because those air tags are from them. <laughs> so Lorato, we're gonna let a couple more people get in on the competition on their favorite app. And then right at the end, we'll draw those air tags. Um, Perfect. But thank you. I think the, the big thing for me with technology, and I think what came up from you, Lorato, so well is just, 
try it. You know what I mean? I think, yeah. I think the kids will tell you what to do and help you, but embracing new ideas and new things, um, it, it's worth it. And I, my encouragement would be if you get it wrong, you get it wrong, and then you choose a different app in the future and eventually you'll get exactly. it right. Um, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Lorata, I've got a question for you. Um, how, with all this increased tech, is cyber security a concern for you? What are your thoughts just before we bring our next speaker in? So my thoughts are, we are all involved. I always tell parents that it's not a teacher's job. It's not just my job as the ed tech person. It's not the teacher's job. It's all of us. We are all involved. And I actually did a presentation for our school where the parents were all in, um, online and I told them that they also need to get security at home. We protect the kids here with what we have, but guys, we are all involved. It's not just us and our parents need to know that protecting our kids is a we job. That's how I feel about it. And I believe that digital citizenship, digital literacy, us creating good digital citizens is in every subject because this is the world we live in now. We are, I mean, we're, as soon as our kids are born, they take ease. So start from there. <laughs> Uh, I absolutely love it. All right, uh, Lorata, that allows me to queue up our next speaker. So I'm going to invite um, Mohammed to come on stage. Lorata, you can drop your video and sound, but don't go anywhere because we want you back on stage after this, please. It's so fun having you on stage and getting so many comments. So, um, Mohammed, you can uh, come on stage. Uh, I think cybersecurity, you know, one of the things we want to do is embrace technology within the classroom. Okay. But what we want to do is we want to do it safely. And I think that for us is a, a big thing, is making it safer. And that's why we've invited Mohammed, uh, who is a kind of education cyber security expert, wow. actually based from Dubai. Um, guys, do we have him in the background? Dan, do you mind bringing him on stage? Um, so we're going to invite him just to share, and specifically for you as a teacher, what is yeah. things you can do? What should you be looking at? What is happening in the space so you are aware and you can keep yourself and your learner safe. All right, Mohammed, are you there? The transmission out of Dubai is coming a little bit slowly. There we go. <laughs> there we go, Mohammed, you're on YouTube. Right, guys. There we go. So everyone, uh, Mohammed is coming straight in from Dubai. Last week, he was manned down with- um, He was meant to be here live yeah, with us. He was meant to be here, but then he went down with COVID. So he's back up and looking great. Um, and uh, he's from Sonic Wall, and I'm quite excited. He's going to give us a little bit more about mm -hmm. cybersecurity and how you can protect yourself. So, uh, Mohammed, welcome over to you. Thank you. Thank you a lot, and it's good to be back. Um, uh, my name is Mohammed Abdullah. I'm based out of Dubai. I'm the regional director for uh, uh, Middle East, Turkey, and Africa at Sonic Wall. Uh, actually, before I start, I just uh, want to share a couple of things. So, um, a couple of years back, I was um, asked by my son, uh, if I'm not an engineer, what job I want to do? And I told him, actually, it's one of two jobs, either a doctor or a teacher. And he asked me why. I told him because teacher, they build and or they build lives and doctors, they save lives. So if there's something that it's on the top of the career, it would be one of these two jobs. Um, the second point I want to highlight, I mean, I had an opportunity 28 years back after I graduated, actually 30 years back when I graduated to, to teach in my university. Um, I was good in computer engineering. They offered me a job. I was very excited at the beginning. Um, guess what? I didn't leave the this job more than a week. And then I told them, sorry, I cannot do this. Uh, teaching and engaging with, with, with kids, it's... Uh, it's a tough job. It's very challenging. Uh, whenever I talk to any of the teachers, especially the one that's dealing with my kids, um, I feel they're, they're doing this for the passion. I mean, they love doing this. They want to do something for the kids. It's not for the money. It's not just a job. It's not just based on their education. It's something that they, they, they love to do. And actually, um, I want to pay my full respect to all the teachers on this call and all the teacher uh, that helping on building our kids. To move on with uh, my presentation, uh, let's give you a quick uh, overview of who we are. So Sonic Wall, it's, uh, it's an American-based company. We have been in 
in the market for 31 years, one of the first um, when it comes to cybersecurity. We have more than uh, half a million of customers worldwide uh, in our 215 countries and territory we're serving. Uh, we have been leading when it comes to innovation for cybersecurity. We're always one step ahead. We see where we are in terms of the technology and, and we, we take one step ahead and try to innovate new technologies to protect uh, our customers and our partners. Uh, we are 100% channel-based. So uh, as, as uh, Ashley mentioned in the morning session and even in his intro, we do have lots of partners globally, lots of partners within Africa that can help the schools and our customers on protecting their infrastructure. If we move on the landscape of uh, uh, attack, cyber attacks, if we take one example of the ransomware, which is simply ransomware, it's a malware, that it's hijack your uh, device, okay, and lock your data. And then the attacker or the hacker requests either to get paid to release this data or he published this data uh, on the dark side, okay? Last year or the mid, mid last year, the first half of last year, we had around 304 million of ransomware. In the second half of the year, it pumped to 623. So that's actually double the number of attacks that's happening. And guess what? These attacks, it's directed number one to education and number two to healthcare, okay? Where is the drawback when it comes to schools or teacher on that? If you are using uh, emails, if someone injected one of these malwares within your emails, you're done. I mean, you're locked, your laptop is locked, your, your PC is locked and you cannot delivering uh, or developing with, with the kids. If you're using Microsoft Teams, for example, uh, for e-education, especially after COVID, we have been doing a lot of e-learning. Again, you're done. With the increase of all the assets that we are seeing in, in the schools, either it's, it's on-prem education or it's work at education from home, we, we sold lots of devices that had been introduced. Nowadays, I mean, in, in, in our days, when I want to get something from my dad, I just keep nagging, keep nagging, keep nagging. These days, you will be surprised what kids are capable to use the technology to ask for something. I mean, my daughter, she's a horse rider. A couple of months back, she was trying to convince me that I need to get her her own horse. And actually, she didn't come and ask for that. She didn't nag. She disappeared a couple of days in her room. Then she came and told me, Daddy, I want to show you something. And I was surprised. Her laptop, she prepared a full end-to-end -end presentation on, to convince me that she needs to buy this horse. Okay? So imagine the kids now use the technology, I mean, across all the platforms to either learn or to deliver a message. Okay? With the increase of number of devices in the network, at the school, that's its more explosion points for, attack, uh, for hackers or attackers to uh, hurt our kids. Not only it's hurting the school data or the teach, stop the teacher from delivering their message, okay, but actually it's also breaching the privacy of our kids, okay? If we move on on how, how we look this from a security perspective, any network or any infrastructure, it's a school, home, or anywhere, it's included of a multi-layer of infrastructure. It can be the internet, it can be the physical PC, it can be the application, the e-learning application we're using, Microsoft, teachers, smart board, et cetera. These are a huge infrastructure and many points that can be leveraged for attackers to penetrate within your network. And that's what we call it layer security. So there is multiple layers. And at Sonic World, we can help on fulfilling the gaps for each of these layers and make sure that the school assets, the teacher, the kids are protected. Okay. One of, uh, I want to refer back to uh, my colleague that presented before me. I, I agree with her 100% that it's a we responsibility. Okay. Uh, 
a year back, uh, there was an incident of my one of uh, my kids' school. It's an international school, and there was inappropriate material that it was shared and spread through uh, the network, the school network. It's not it's not the teacher responsibility. It didn't happen from the teacher. It was a simple attack to one of the kids' phone that is connected on the school network and start you know hijacking the data of all the kids in the school and start publishing appropriate uh, material. Okay, and this is where we all need to work together: the teacher, the administration part, the parents on understanding where is the risk and how we can mitigate this risk. And this incident, actually, we did help. We did, we did run a security assessment free of charge completely, and that's one of the offering that we provide at Sonic Wall for the school to understand where exactly is the gap and, and, and how we can close this hole. That was number one. Number two, we helped the school on applying the best in class cybersecurity product to make sure that they're protecting against any further attack in the future. The third part is that I had the pleasure to deliver a session, uh, actually three different sessions, a session for the teacher and administration team, a session for the kids, and a session for the parents. To share our experience with them and tell them where exactly, what cybersecurity mean, what attack mean, and how you can, we can help each other on mitigating this. This is one of uh, the case studies that uh, we worked in, uh, in, in, in Africa as well. We have lots of these case studies in the Middle East where we had uh, uh, an international school uh, that have lots of branches spread across the whole region. And they have a mandate to first deliver uh, best of class education to their kids. They wanna make sure that the tools that the teachers they are using is safe and protected and there is no hiccups during delivering these sessions and third they want to make sure that the service provided or what we call it quality of service it's up to the standards for these countries first we we worked out with with the customer on understanding their infrastructure the industry itself it's the same Nothing changed. I mean, if, I, if I'm checking on South Africa or Kenya, uh, uh, Egypt, uh, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Saudi, the industry is the same. The only difference is how the infrastructure look, look like and how the administration is operating. So we did spend some time with the group and with the individual schools to understand how they're set up. And we start working on them on building an architecture to make sure everyone within the ecosystem is protected. That's not something new for us. I mean, education, it's one, uh, especially K-12, it's one of the strongest uh, verticals within Sonic World worldwide. And you'll be surprised that in Middle East, Turkey and Africa, we are leading this. We are number one when it comes to the education or securing uh, schools and universities within our region. That's not something new for us. We have been doing this. I'm just, you know, I mean, case studies and references in the region, it's, it's huge, it's a lot. I'm just sharing some of these ones that we did within the Africa Authority. With that, thank you for very much for the time and the opportunity. And again, I wanna, I wanna share my respect and uh, thanks for, for all the teacher doing for our kids. Thank you. Yeah. Mohammed, well said. I think uh, 100%. Um, so much respect for our teachers. And thank you for what you're doing and keeping yeah. them safe. It's amazing to hear that kind of Africa and Middle East is on the cutting edge on that. Um, I'm going to ask you to end your slide. I'm going to ask Lorazo to jump on. I'm also going to ask Ashley Lawrence to jump on. Um, uh, Guys, we can kill the slide there just to give us more space on stage. Um, sure. Maybe, Ashley, just one question for you. I know you are the local person here in, or one yeah. of the local team here in South Africa. If anyone is sitting there going, Flip, I'm not worried about, uh, or I'm a bit worried about my classroom security or school security, what can they do? Can they reach out to you? Can you help them? Let us know. 100%. Um, first of all, there's an app. 
Hoover app on the phone. Um, even me in the tender age of 50 is using these things. So we have, uh, the, of course, I can't open it. I have the app on my phone. So please uh, share, reach out, connect. Um, there is uh, obviously wonderful Poppy Acts in South Africa. So please say, do contact me. And that gives us permission to contact you. Uh, and then we can put you, uh, um, we will reach out to you. We've actually just um, <clears throat> put together a little plan on the back of our Cape Town trip. And we're going to rinse and repeat for uh Joburg this Friday, but yes, we're 100% available. Um, we touched this morning and we didn't kind of mention this afternoon, but we're a 100% channel based company. So we have certified and accredited partners, some of them going back 22, 23 years in South Africa. So when Mo speaks about South Africa and the Middle East, Turkey, and Africa being the worldwide leaders in education, I think some of the first schools we did were in North Pretoria in 1999. So we've got quite a bit of expertise in the area. Um, so reach out to us, we'll hook you up with a partner, we'll come and see you virtually or physically, uh, and we'll help you start your leveling up journey um, uh, in your schools. Awesome, uh, Mohammed. thank you. We appreciate uh, you. Uh, I know you're still in isolation, so we appreciate you sharing with us, um, opening our eyes to what's happening there. Ashley, once again, um, I think if anyone out there wants uh, to reach out to Ashley. Also, what we've done, there's a poll yeah. in the poll, uh, which is on the right of your screen. You just pop in there and say, yes, uh, get the team from Ashley, uh, the team from Sonic World to contact me. It's basically an opt-in. allows mm -hmm. us then to share details so they can contact you. Um, and then, Lorato, can you give us just the full cybersecurity, uh, one takeaway that you would like to share from uh, this last bit? Thank you so much, Mohammed. First of all, it's always so great to hear from such companies because the fact that Mohammed spoke at first about being how he respects teachers and actually how he, you know, he puts in this work for teachers and schools means a whole lot because these are companies that actually hear our problems, that our problems in a school where you have more than one child, unlike at home where, you know, you're controlling your three kids or your one child. Companies like you guys, you know, you see us as how are we managing all these kids? And it happens, Mohammed. I mean, they could be searching one thing and then woo, something else pops up. So it's always good to hear that you guys actually have teachers on your side. You have educators on your side and you're putting the kids security first. And thank you for mentioning that it is important what I said, that it's a we thing. Us, Mohammed and them, Ashley, parents, everybody, we are in this together. Awesome. Gerardo, thank you so much. Um, Ashley, Mohammed, uh, you gents can drop off. Um, Melissa, you shared uh, that you find it scary that children can bypass stuff. I encourage you reach out to Ashley, fill in the poll. Uh, he'll be able to share some tips on how to prevent that from happening. And that's what they do Absolutely. because it is super scary what these kids can do. <laughs> All right. Um, I've got a quick question. Is anyone out there got a laptop but no laptop bag first person to say <laughs> yes first person first person to say they need a laptop bernard, oh, you, bernard, got, bernard. you just won yourself a laptop bag from dell um uh, and uh they also that laptop bag also has some goodies in it it has goodies in it two times 32 gigabyte usb key ring so you'll be able to share that uh with one of your colleagues as well so bernard well done you were first on the draw um on that note uh, while we're talking dell we're i'm talking quite dell. excited for this session lorato you can drop your video and stuff drop off to the back we will bring you back on don't worry awesome so next up oh we have pam pam's on stage ready hello welcome pam good to see you back on schoolscape stage um by way of introduction, Dell is a great partner of ours, um, and I'm particularly excited about this session that, we, uh, that we're going to have now. So Dell has been working closely with um, someone named Christian Peterson, and he is one of those faithful parents that's more involved, I think, in the school than it sounds in his own business that he um, co-owns with someone. So he's been on the governing body of Rampart Primary for two years now, really focusing in on finances and how to digitalize their school. Um, and it's one of the lowest fee paying schools in Joburg. He's got kids in the school and he's just extremely passionate and he's doing an amazing thing. So welcome, Christian. Welcome, um, Pam. And uh, yeah, today we're going to hear their story, their journey um, from
from Christian, and then a bit also from Dal's side. Dal's doing some amazing new collaborative hybrid stuff in education, um, but that will come in a minute. First, we're going to hand over to Christian and to Pam, and they're really going to discuss kind of how they've taken a school that was desperate and wanted to get digital, a digital footprint into their school to really succeed at it um, and on a budget, which is amazing because sometimes it's a conundrum. They don't always go together, hey? <laughs> That's true. That's true. Awesome. Okay, Thanks I'm going to give the floor to you guys and off you go. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thank you, Christian, for joining. I think firstly, we have to wish all women out there a happy International Women's Day. Um, there's a lot of women that are moms and teachers and educators, whether they be at home or in school. So thank you for your support. And uh, uh, we will change the bias and break it. Uh, just a brief introduction. My name is Pamela Sunaran. I am the Client Solutions Lead for Southern Africa, which is your endpoint technology. Uh -huh. Um, and I'm also the education ambassador for Dell for our Middle East, Russia, Africa, Turkey um, region. And, uh, you know, I personally have been passionate about education for quite a substantial number of years and have implemented quite a, a number of solutions across the African continent. Um, so, you know, having Christian here today also just allows us to share with you um, the challenges that's a lot of our schools in the African continent experience, let alone just South Africa. Um, and Christian comes with a, a wealth of knowledge, as Ashley mentioned, he's personally involved in, in how his kids are being educated and what sort of technology is being provided in that space, uh, especially with a school like Rand Park Primary, where budget is challenged and most schools that sit within a way it is uh, parents that actually pay the school fees, you, it always triggers that conversation as to whether, do I want to make that transformation? Uh, do I want to invest that money? And this is what we are going to delve into today. Um, so this is a session for both educators and students and the decision makers within the schooling environment. And I'm going to leave it to Christian to give a brief description of why he's involved with Rand Park Primary um, and and just a basic overview of the challenges that he's experienced um, uh, overlooking the infrastructure within Rand Park Primary. Thank you so much, uh, Pamela. I really appreciate it. Just wanted to confirm everyone can hear me clearly. Um, I, my name is Christian Peters. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for inviting me to the session. Uh, I'm an SGB member. Actually, uh, just to correct, I've been around on the SGB board now for five years. I served the previous term as treasurer of the school, and uh, I joined as a parent um, into a lovely school that has so much potential, but there are limitations in low-paying fee schools. Uh, these are the real challenges that we face, especially during COVID. Um, we have exemptions. This is a Section 21 school. And um, good governance is one of the key elements that, that helps us um, provide the right education and platform. So a bit of background myself, I'm a, I'm a dad, I have twins in the school, they're now in grade, grade seven. They are, uh, they've, they've joined the school in grade two. Um, and one of the things we picked up first is when I wanted to join as an SGB member was to make a difference in the school. The challenges that we face in section 21 schools is funds. Um, Rand Park Primary, as an example, is one of the lowest, actually currently in Gauteng, the second lowest paying thing school um, in Gauteng. And with that being said, you, we have to cover a wide variety of expenditures. And there's a dire need for technology and a platform for kids. And the challenges that we faced was upfront funds. Fundraising was one of the attributes that helped us fundraise, but we need something more than that and that's where governance came in so the the, the challenges that we went through um starting with was planning planning was one of the biggest things we had to do as a collective thing and one of the biggest things we as a hgb group um faced was collaboration when we joined uh, when i joined the hgb the team that i joined in the hgb uh, is the make or break in a school they're the parents that that contribute their knowledge their wealth their information and when you have a great team on the SGB and there's good governance in a school, which is what Rand Park Primary is all about, and a good principal, I can't, I can't isolate the principal. The principal is always the big part in, in a good school. 
um, but honesty, integrity, and order, good audits. Then uh, the, the, the need has been talked about. So to, to bring a Dell solution on board is a big task um, from a financial point of view. So planning uh, is where Dell helped us significantly with the consultation part as to what solution would best work for it. Content is the end result as to what the school would need, but the, the platform, the hardware, the software, the securities, we just spoke about that in the previous session now, is a fundamental important aspect when it comes to safety. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's, not a, it's not an SGB thing, it's not a teacher, it's not a learner, it's a us thing. We have to plan this as a, as a, as, as a collective team. So planning uh, took the better part of the time that we had to, to plan and put this together. Dell came in also with the um, part of the solution and gave us um, a, a considerable discount and, and the collective solution. And we are very appreciative of that. And now, um, if you want to bring up the first slide, I just wanted to bring up to show you what the end result is. Um, in, um, I want to quickly see if I can just prove oh. that one here. Um, so while you're doing that, Christian, I mean, um, with Rand Park Primary being a low cost, uh, or a low fee school. Um, this was a difficult task for you. Uh, it took a while to plan to actually get uh, an indication of how you're going to map out your infrastructure. And exactly to your point, one of your pain points were firstly, do you uh, need a full solution that has that is hosting all data on the devices? The question to that was no. You want a virtual solution, and you needed uh, the back-end infrastructure to support this virtual solution, where majority of the applications are sitting on the cloud. So what we did was, and and you know, we Christian and myself met uh, after he started his planning, um, and um, you know, a lot of schools are faced with this challenge where a traditional notebook does not apply in that environment due to the low fees or the low uh, or the small budgets um, that are available. Um, so this is a virtual desktop infrastructure. Uh, it is a cloud solution that we provided um, uh, to Christian. And we actually provided the back-end infrastructure, which is your Power Edge servers. Uh, we actually placed a T6 spotty server with sufficient amount of storage and memory to actually assist with a 50 user infrastructure at Rand Park Primary. Um, so Christian, this is the setup, right? That is correct. And one of, the, one of the big things that I really appreciated about this solution is the expandability and upgradability. Because being an IT for, for amount of years and technology, technology upgrades so quick. And the, the content that's moved from desktop to web-based to cloud and it's an infinity amount of cloud uh, uh, content um, for, for school education that's now available. But that hardware selection plays a crucial role in making the right selection. And as you can see in the background, um, these, are, these are thin terminal cases where we have a central server solution that's connected to cloud, which updates up, uh, and, and increases security possibilities. And as you can see, the, the collective uh, administration, maintenance, management, all the aspects that was part of the planning has come to this um, in what you see in the background there. So kits can very easily be introduced to base ground up to high to any, any level of education from and it's collectively done to all the kids in one classroom at the same time, which is fundamentally important in, in the future and, and at the moment. So um, that was one of the biggest plus points for me and the support. I think one of the biggest things behind this is you can have a great state-of-the-art system and best upgradability, but if you do not have that support, you're going to struggle with with uh, with aspects and and, and 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 issues coming up in the future. And that's where Dell came in, and their support is also great. And and that's key, right? A lot of uh, uh, schools today are worried about just um, attaining the hardware and not being able to implement it. And the second challenge comes into play is when educators are unfamiliar with the technology, let alone students being unfamiliar with tech. So from a Dell perspective, we traditionally sell three tiers of support. In a, a situation or an infrastructure like this, we would generally go straight for pro support where there's a 24 by seven uh, engineer that's available and the support of your infrastructure is critical. A lot of schools get left behind 
after the fact or after the point of sale. And from a Dell perspective, we have uh, a variety of support options that can suit your budget, as, as Christian has mentioned. Uh, Christian, I want to ask the following question. How has your students integrated into this cloud platform and the virtual desktop environment? That is actually a very, very good question. As you, as you can see, uh, the, this was the day that we took this photo is when we were setting up uh, um, uh, Hour of Code, which is a web-based platform. And the kids very quickly caught on to the, the, the platform itself. We're actually at the beginning stages right now of introducing this to the entire school as, as we've just increased the size of the school, Grand Park Primary. So we've, in, we've added seven more classrooms uh, due to the, to the requirement from the, from the GDE. And uh, so we now have 1,200 kids plus that's joining this classroom. Um, the, the tables have been worked out, and, uh, but we've seen a very positive result. The excitement behind the kids when they sit in front of the screen the first time is, is, a, is a Kodak moment, as we call it. It's a picture that, you, that uh, I haven't taken one yet, but uh, I will definitely send it on. But it's, it was worthwhile. And we can, you can see the, 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 the excitement in their faces when they, when they join and when they when they have these sessions and it, it, it is it, it is all worth the effort you know while, all worthwhile when you see that at that moment so um you know this is a little bit more detail but you know the audience that we have today and and the messaging that we want to pass on is it is not impossible to no. Uh, no. make the transition it's not impossible to make the change um and you know looking at this picture there's more improvements we can make around the look and feel. For example, this WISE 5070 thin client that we've got is a uh, now shifting into a hybrid portfolio where you have the option for complete cloud or you have the option for uh, applications to sit on your device and we can sell that as a, a, a either or. So de depending on um, your school scenario, there might be certain segments within your school that require virtual, uh, a virtual cloud environment, and there may be other users or students that require um, uh, technology that they can utilize on their device or hard storage and, and processing power. Um, so th we, we can actually customize a solution for schools. What I want to ask is, if you had to give a ballpark figure of what your total expense was to set these devices up and, and get your students uh, onto tech, uh, what would that ball, ballpark figure look like for a, a school that's sitting in your um, space? So to answer that question, um, and just to also elaborate on what you said before, we're already using the hybrid scenario where we have a local applications installed on the thin terminal as well as the web collective uh, um, login. But um, to, to, to upgrade to the solution is more than just a computer center. We had to actually redo the entire network of the school itself. So starting from the, the, the internet connection right through to the to the to the terminals that you see on the desktop screen here, and um, collectively with the installation, the backup teams, the Dell partners, their costs, um, the machines, the implementation, the planning. Um, in addition, also the the um, the server room that we had to uh, amend and build. The computer center was an existing um, computer center with all the generation, very old generation desktop uh, uh, laptop uh, computers that we had to um, remove and, and, and roll out the new. Now, our costs, we had to um, also implement uh, air conditioning, electricity, the whole cost. So if I collectively had to put this into, you're looking just uh, under a million rand or just under a million to 1.1, 1.2 million rand uh, for a solution like this. That's great. And this gives our audience an indication. Uh, I know we're running out of time, Ashley, and we have to move on to Deneo. Um, Christian, I want to say thank you. I look forward to working with you to implement such a solution to other schools that would potentially uh, want um, uh, to improve their, their, their tech uh, transformation. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you again for your time and thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure speaking to you today. Awesome. Thank you, Christian. Thank you so much. Um, I think just to touch on one question that came through um, on the chat was 
and, and Pam, you're the perfect person to answer this. Can we contact Dull directly for the support that Christiane is talking about? Or do you then need to go through third party resellers and things like that? Or if they're sitting with Dull Kit and they need help with it, where do they go? Um, we are a channel organization. Um, we do support our partner community in South Africa and Southern Africa. You are welcome to contact me directly and I will put you in touch. I will engage with you firstly, we'll figure out the solution, and then we'll engage a partner that can support you on the back end. Awesome, so use those polls if that is something that you want. Um, do you want help with, want to start the discussion in school, you're looking for devices, you're looking for advice. Um, Pam and her team are the perfect people for that. Talking about team, we still have Dineo from Dell that's going to come on and speak a little bit about amazing collaborative new tech that Dell's bringing out. I mean, I want to talk about a complete solution really for education. So I'm going to give it back. We're going to say bye to Christian. and we'll give it back to Pam now and welcome Dineo on stage. There you go. All right. Dineo, are you there? Let's bring you on stage. Um, yeah, and Christian, I just saw one of the comments. Well done with what you've done. It's, I, think, mm. um, I think there are many schools out there that were wishing they had parents like you that were actively engaged uh, within the school. So it's just amazing to see what you, you've done as a school. All yeah. right. Technical team, can we see Dineo in the background? Can we bring her on stage? Are you there? <laughs> I think what, what's also good to know is that there, there are companies like Dell, you know, big players in the industry and in, in, in education that are thinking of lower income schools. You know, this, this technology and the adoption of technology and digitalization of schools can't just be for the upper level schools anymore. We need to have that trickle down effect properly going on in our country, especially now seeing what a COVID scenario that can do to all of us. Um, it really does halts the whole educating spectrum if we don't have some form of technology so so I'm, that's awesome all right i see we have a lost to know but i'm sure um she will be back on soon so what i think if it's all right with you pam we're just going to bring yes. our next speaker on and then when uh, when we find her again we'll pull her back back on and i, I love it good Great. old technology there's so always got to be a challenge let's hand over maybe to pam for a minute to close off just what her and chris are talking about and then We'll bring Luke on. All right. Sure. Thank you, Ashley. Um, you know, to that point, uh, I think a lot of schools have a fear of making that change. And I just want to highlight that there is a solution for every school. Uh, we, we customize our solutions. We ask the questions before we propose a solution. And, and that's the conversation I want to start having with the audience today. It is more around Give us an idea, an indication, let us do the assessment, and we can take it from there. I see Deneo has joined. I'm not sure whether you want to still skip to the next speaker or we get Deneo to kick off on the collaboration. All right, sorry about that. We're doing some uh, magic in the background getting our next speaker on because the speaker is in person. Um, Deneo, we, I think we found and we're gonna get her back on. Is she there now? All right, let's see if we can get Dineo on before the next speaker. Dineo, can you jump on stage? And I just got so much respect for all of you teachers out there for two years of lockdown and kids at home having to deal with all of this. You know, we do it for one day and it gives us, uh, uh, yeah, nightmares, but we get in there. All right, uh, Dineo is not on, so Pam, we're going to drop you off, but thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your on, time. We'll bring her on. And uh, once again, if you want to reach out to Pam and the team from Dell, please do so, just jump on the poll. You can literally um, enter that poll, say, listen, I want some more information and she'll be able to connect with you. All right, Lubes, you are up. Um, so I had to do some serious bribery and corruption for this one. Um, so Lubes is actually my daughter's teacher. Um, and he is one of these frustrating teachers because um, every day my daughter comes home and just tells me something gushing with a smile on her face, like not irritating. That's not, it, I think it puts me to shame that there's someone that is so loved by so many children. So um, every time she comes and she shares something, I'm just like, wow, we've got to get this guy on stage to share something about how he engages um, these kids and uh, just some of the stories of technology. So Loops, welcome on stage. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome being here. Brilliant. Thanks for having me here. 
thanks for jumping on short notice. Um, so Loops, I'm going to intro you, then I'm going to step off stage. But so if everyone knows um, Loops is a uh, grade grade five. Grade five. My daughter is in the class. I should know this. <laughs> if, my, if my wife is watching, I'm going to be shot. Um, so he's a, a grade five teacher. Uh, he's at Rhenish Primary, um, and he's just passionate about education. So, um, Loops, I'm going to hand over to you, and uh, the floor is yours for the next ten minutes to share what you do to get these kids excited. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so, just a quick intro about myself. Uh, obviously, my name is uh, Loops Tuswa. I am born in the Eastern Cape, uh, love the Eastern Cape, favorite, favorite part of the world. And um, so I've been, I've been at Rhenish Primary for, for three years now, and I am really, really passionate about, about teaching. Um, I started off as a, as a sports coach in Cape Town, and I just realized um, how much the learners could just get out of, out of being on the, on the sports field. And it just intrigued me of, how, how different they were from a sports field to being, to being in the classroom. So I started asking a couple of questions on how we can get them to be, to be so engaged um, in the classroom. And again, my, I think then it brings me to my teaching philosophy. If, if you don't have a relationship with the learners and if you can't form a proper bond with them, then unfortunately you can't get any, any teaching done. So um, that has always been my philosophy is let's see and let's see how we can get them to engage and how much we can get them to, to actually have fun and to, to love learning. And I think one of the most important thing, as I say, is to just build a relationship with, the, with your kids. And, and I get, I think you also then need to be, a, as a teacher, you need to be bold. You need to be able to step out there. We can't we can't be teaching the same way that we were taught, I don't know, 30 years ago. Um, something, something needed to be changed. And that's, that's how I love being able to engage with them now and using technology to be able to, to engage with the, with the children. But most importantly, it is building a relationship. And one of the first things I do in my classes um, right at the start of the year is to get them to share one thing with me that they wouldn't want to share with their friends or they don't want to share with anybody else. They just want me as, as, as their teacher to be, um, to be able to know. And um, then it gets them to feel a bit safer on, um, and, and they feel a bit more comfortable in class that I've, I've actually got their backs and I do care about them. And I think once you start caring and once you start showing that Yes, you are there to deliver the content, but you're also more interested in their personal lives. How are they doing at home? And, you know, um, are they enjoying school? You know, we're not always going to enjoy school. And there are some days where us as teachers as well, I mean, we end off, we don't want to be at school. <laughs> and I'm sure, the, I'm sure the kids feel exactly the same way. So I think the more we can engage with them, it it's just brings out a bit of a different character to them. Um, it takes them out of their comfort zone, but it also takes us out of their comfort zone. And it's been so amazing um, to be able to use technology to do that. Um, about two weeks ago, I spoke to my children about um, the use of technology and about being on Instagram and about being on TikTok. And I must be honest, I don't know what TikTok is. I've never been on TikTok. And, um, but they love it. And they, they seem to be really engaged in it. And I managed to find an old, an old student of mine that I, that I taught when I was still a little bit younger. And uh, we've just, we've managed to build up this great relationship. So when one of my learners in my class asked me, sir, can you please play music? I was like, oh, here we go again. But yes, let's have some fun. Let's play music. And I played them. Oh, so they asked for this song. Uh, Miss Me When You're Gone by Will Lindley. And I was absolutely shocked. I was like, oh, well, I can't know this guy. Um, I think I taught this guy, you know, and then my whole class went absolutely crazy. Oh, so he's on TikTok, he's on Instagram, he's on YouTube. I'm like, well, I've never, I've never seen these things, you know, I'm, I'm an old man, you know. And um, so we, again, it was just something a bit different in class and they managed, so they started telling me all about him. And fortunately enough, I'm still in contact with them 
and we managed to do a Zoom call. And he managed to perform his song for us over, over Zoom. Um, again, you know, it's not my cup of tea. I'm not really sure what's happening. But the kids showed me how it works. And we had half an hour with Will Lindley, who is apparently now an absolute sensation on TikTok and social media. And he managed to engage with my class. He managed to tell stories to my class. And for me, that was just so amazing. They asked him, you know, he opened himself up as well. They were like, he was like, oh, please ask me a question. And yo, I was impressed with my students and the questions they asked. Um, so that's, again, just one of the few things that we can do as teachers is just to move out, you know, move out of our comfort zone, ask those difficult questions and, and, and see what happens. You know, um, I always have a session once, once a week with my class where everything just stops and they can ask me anything. You know, I think once you open yourself up and that's when you can build that relationship, that's when they can share stuff with you about Will Lindley being on TikTok and all sorts of, all sorts of different areas. And, um, and it's amazing what you get out of those sessions where you just let yourself be. You open yourself up personally and you just say, all right, off you go. Ask, ask me a question and, and, we'll take it, and we'll take it from there. And it's, as I say, it's been very, been very interesting to, you know, to say to them, I really actually don't know. I don't know what this technology is that you're talking about. And I think once they see that you are human, you can also make mistakes. You also want to learn from them. Oh, it, makes, it makes a big difference. And it just makes the class very exciting. All right. I am back, Loops. That, yeah, that was phenomenal. I, I now I think I understand why um, my daughter... Um, just loves being in your class, just those moments of having a, a, a break. And I'm looking at some of these, um, some of these comments. Um, Stefan, very helpful session. Thank you for sharing and being open. Um, uh, Claire says, connecting with the kids is so important. Thank you. Uh, Malachi says, hey, Lips, as a young teacher just starting out, your humble approach has really encouraged me. And thank you. I think that that, that humble approach has come through. Um, Heidi, I can see why the kids love you. I don't know if we've ever had this amount of comments. <laughs> Normally, where we get this amount of comments is either like Matthew Haynes or Lorato on stage. So on that uh, note, Lorato, please hop on. And, and sorry, it's gone slightly dark in here because uh, we're in load shedding at the moment. Um, Lorato, you talk about just getting that, that, that heart of the kid. Um, and you say you make time once a week. H how do you start that conversation with the kids? What do you do to actually get them to open up? Um, I think it's, it's quite important that they lead the session. So I don't try to force them to open up or ask the difficult questions. If they ask me the difficult questions and I'm able to answer them, then they realize we are actually on the same level here. It's not this teacher, student, and the teacher very high up. So, for example, I mean, they, I love telling them stories of, you know, me back in my school days. And the first question is, so were you naughty? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lorato, a comment um, or a thought or a question from your side? Wow, Loops, thank you so much. I think all our kids would love you too. <laughs> we, we, we don't want to steal you away from Peter, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if there are any principals or senior staff watching this, you are not allowed to put a job offer on for Loops. It's not allowed. Loops, I love what you said about learning from your students because believe it, I mean, I teach from little ones. I'm still learning and I learn with such enthusiasm and I show the kids that I didn't know how to do it and they taught me. And just to see them, wait, wait, what? Ms. Shooping, you didn't know about this. Just like you said about TikTok, you know, Look, I make it known that I'm learning from you. I don't ever want them to feel like I'm overpowering and I know everything because I don't. Today, there was a coding session that we had and I couldn't work it out. The one girl worked it out and she helped everybody. I was like, thank you. I've been stuck on this. So Loops, I love that you, you know, you, you, you are open like that because I also allow vulnerability in my classroom. And Loops, I'm older than you, but man, do I love TikTok. But what I do with my <laughs> learners... <laughs> I've, I've, I've been so told I also have a TikTok that. conversation with my learners. And the main thing I said is let, the parents must also be involved. They must know what's happening on social media. They must know their children's TikTok. They must 
Because at the end of the day, I always tell parents that device, you bought it, you're paying for it. It's not your child's device. So you should know what's happening. And um, I absolutely love your vulnerability because I also love taking time to get to know my students and, you know, get, get, get crazy with them. And I, you know, ask me questions. What do you guys want to know about Mishooping? And I also get like weird and wonderful questions. And they the, my older kids always get blown away that because they're like, how did you, how was it studying coding and all of that? I'm self-taught. So it's things like that, that blows their mind and inspires them more. So I must say you inspired me, but maybe all the principals and all the amazing people out there, we shouldn't say anything because he belongs to Peter. <laughs> anyone's mind. I see uh, Leslie says we are using TikTok for art and culture. Oh, wow. uh, dramas as well. Yes. As well. Yes. Well, there we go. Uh, embrace the technology. All right. Um, sadly, Loops, I think I could have asked you another 30 questions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be really, really naughty. We have, and I actually have to take my shoe off for this, if you can believe it. Um, I don't know if we can go onto that camera angle on my left, guys. Um, we got branded Feltskin um, that we got uh, sponsored. I don't know if you can see this light is terrible at the moment. Uh, we'll go look over there. But anyway, so uh, Falskun is now doing a range of school shoes, if oh, you can wow. believe that. But what they've also done is they do cool shoes for adults. So they wanted us to give away a couple of pairs of shoes. Um, and I just think um, I've been inspired. Um, we were going to give it away online for someone who had the best comments or the best thoughts. But your, your thing around just bringing that speaker in blew me away. So I think you are, well, you're not going to get this shoe, <laughs> <laughs> luckily for you. But uh, you are going to get a pair of branded Falskun. You can put whatever logo you want on. Oh, awesome. There we go. Thank you very uh, much. And that is not by brain corruption. You can still <laughs> fail my daughter. Um, but yeah, uh, big thank you to Falskun, uh, who sponsored this amazing company. In fact, I think they've got some royals wearing their Falskuns. They've got Ashton Kutcher, like absolutely amazing. And it's a South African company. And now they do store shoes. So there's my pun for them because they are awesome. All right. Um, Loops, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to ask you pleasure. to exit left. But thank you. And uh, we'll make sure you get your pair of branded Falskun. Thank you. All right, Lorato, we are nearly there. Um, we have uh, one more set of speakers lined up. Uh, so we are going to pull that set of speakers um, on. But before we do that, we just want the team from Dell to finish up. So let's see. I'm really hoping she's there. Now, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you guys hear me? I can. Brilliant. Uh, Lorato, you can drop off school. Danao, welcome on stage if you want to turn on um, your camera. And I know you want to just give us a little bit more um, about what Dell is actually doing in school and in classrooms. So um, I'm going to hand over to you to share. Great. Um, just tell me, what are you seeing? Are you seeing just the slide? Or yeah, I've got your collaboration hybrid classrooms, connect, present, collaborate. That excites me. Fantastic. Hi, everybody. My name is Dinao Litsolo. I am the EMEA product manager for Large to Space and Groom Solutions for Dow. Um, so today I will be talking about basically how to move from uh, the traditional way of, of, of educating to a hybrid and blended edu and education. Um, what we've seen is that learning in the future will be hybrid and blended. And educators and students both require a fluid experience realized across a continuum of spaces that is motivated by a need for flexibility when it comes to how and where learning takes place. Education won't be confined to a physical classroom or strictly virtual environments, but remote participation will be just as dynamic as in-person learning. The flexibility that hybrid and blended learning offers, while not new to all, may be new to many and will have far reaching impact. So the modern hybrid classroom will be boundaryless. Students and educators will be empowered by synchronous and asynchronous learning, as well as interactive and multimodal engagement designed to meet the needs of every student in every circumstance. Um, devices have been designed to support a range of spaces so that no voice goes unheard. So returning to the classroom post pandemic means solving new challenges around safety, education, continuity and communication. And I believe earlier on, we're also talking about security. 
the COVID-19 uh, pandemic showed us that um, the flexibility in learning environments can help accommodate students with various learning styles, abilities, as well as needs. Some students flourish on video when they're in the comfort of their home, while others feel more engaged in the classroom. Students who can't go to school due to illness or other circumstances can still now connect to the classroom and continue learning wherever they are. So by equipping classrooms with technology designed to enhance hybrid education will allow instructors to focus on teaching while giving both in-person and remote students a high quality learning experience. So optimizing a classroom for hybrid teaching and learning is key to ensure that your students can hear and can be heard. You need to consider your audio and video technology to ensure both remote and in-room participants can be clearly heard and understood. Capturing physical non-verbal communication like facial expressions or gestures is as important as the classroom um, content to ensure maximum engagement and understanding. By using technology that offers microphone arrays, noise or separation and high quality speakers, students can clearly hear and participate in classroom conversations without poor audio getting in the way. And as a mother um, of um, home uh, school, uh, of girls that are being homeschooled, it is quite important that they, that they are being heard as well. They're being able to, um, to hear and see the teacher while they're teaching as well. I mean, we had some um, uh, teething issues in the beginning um, when the pandemic started, because there was a lot of things that the, that the kids needed to learn to be able to express themselves on Zoom, to express them, themselves um, in on video, um, and also know that the teacher is always watching them as well. Um, you need to be able to give teachers the ability to move around. High quality video is a necessity for modern collaboration. Technology for cameras has advanced significantly with high quality cameras now available for all spaces. Cameras with auto framing capabilities allow teachers to move around the room naturally to fit their teaching style while capturing their actions so students at home can clearly see. And being able to wirelessly present from the device while still moving around and being able to still engage with the classroom um, with classroom management software that um, uh, where you can actually see what the students are actually doing helps even more. You can bring digital flexibility to physical spaces. And there's a variety of ways that you can share and interact dynamically with content. A common scenario, as I mentioned, is sharing directly from a participant's device. To ensure students and educators working remotely can fully participate in group collaboration and meetings, education workspaces will need technology to help bridge the divide between the old in-person models and the new hybrid and remote spaces. Using personal and shared devices in a digital or hybrid learning environment will help students socialize more and gain key skills they'll use throughout their lives. With the use of interactive displays in the classroom, educators can now annotate any type of content or write um, on a digital whiteboard in real time, creating a dynamic learning experience for both in-person and remote students. It's also easy to save and send whiteboards and any notations so students can refer back to them later. So why choose Dell for collaboration? Uh, because our solutions are our, uh, a reflection of our commitment to innovation, productivity, and reliability, making sure that you are able to work, educate effectively and efficiently together, whether at home, at the, in the classroom, or in the office. Bringing the future of collaboration to the forefront, Dell has designed varying size panels offering Dell customers options for building collaboration spaces suited for their budget and business. We have beautiful large monitors with touch technology to, designed to make group collaboration a little bit more seamless. Truly designed for the classroom, these monitors have scaling technology intended to elevate text clarity and presentations on screen. With our 4K, um, um, screens as well, you'll be able to share those beautiful 4K videos that we can find that our, learn, our, our educators are creating. So our collaboration solutions are software and hardware agnostic, easy to deploy and even easier to use. World-class technologies need world-class collaborators. 
So we have partnered with leading companies to complete the solution, to help you, our customers, deliver consistent collaboration experience. Our interactive monitors feature a unique design that's compatible with our Dell Micro PC, which integrates seamlessly into the back panel. This thus creates an all-in-one solution that simplifies deployment and network management. So our monitors are easy to deploy. They will serve well for digital whiteboarding in the classroom. You can present from almost any source, including wirelessly when paired up with one of our partners, wireless receiver, and the classroom management software that comes with it that lets you connect simultaneously to up to 50 student devices. You can customize our solutions to, to how you see fit. Not only can we customize, but we also have standard um, bundles yes, that we have put, to, uh, put together. Yeah. Sorry to cut in over you. We are sadly out of time. Um, okay. But if you would like to give us just 30 seconds more, maybe kind of next steps. And I know we've also got a Dell gift, which uh, I would love to give away. So if you'd like to give us some closing remarks. Sure, no problem. So we are able to provide you either modular approach to be able to, in, um, that would work with existing investments or infrastructure that you currently have. Or you can go with a bundle approach with ready-made solutions from Zoom Rooms or uh, Teams, Microsoft Teams Rooms to be able to um, also apply your Microsoft 365 um, licenses there. We are able to also create um, solutions specifically for your students or your teachers based on the, the, the device, the, the personal device that they're getting. Um, we can add different client peripherals to be able to form a bundle solution, making it easier for you to actually uh, help your parents uh, budget more for, for the next year so that they've got all the um, tools that they need, whether they're learning from school or they're learning from home. Um, so, yeah, so please do contact us. We can be able to uh, put together bundle solutions end to end from the classroom to personal um, solutions. Awesome. Um I think uh, what excites me is just there's so much available out there that we can look from from Dell's side. Um, there is a poll. If you are looking, going, wait a second, maybe some of those solutions would work in my school. Please, on the poll, just click yes. It allows us to share the information with the team from Dell. Um, but you know, that's absolutely amazing and just cool seeing, uh, looking at the stuff now and looking at what was in that other school, what you've done is absolutely phenomenal. So we actually want to give away a Dell prize. We have one time snug Wi-Fi range extender and a laptop bag and a 32 gigabyte a USB key ring. So uh, that is quite a lot from Dell, which is absolutely amazing. So I'm going to ask everyone get on the chat bar um, in the ready. Um, I want you to mention one thing that stood out from Dell's presentation, be it um, when Danae was speaking or be it when um, the school where Christian was speaking or Pamela, just one thing that stood out, one thing that's made uh, an impact for you. Oh, Lukanya was on the ball. Any, oh, there we go. Now they come in all through. Um, we're going to let you write a couple of comments and then we're going to go any, meeny, money, mo and choose one. Uh, but Danae, thanks so much. I think you have uh, now dropped off, but we just really appreciate you coming oh, on. Yeah, thank and you thanks, so much. <laughs> yeah, and, th and thanks for coming back on uh, when you had disappeared. I know how uh, stressful um, this Wi-Fi thing can be. So it's cool also to see that you guys have solutions. I think possibly you need to hook us up with some of those solutions so we don't uh, lose any speakers. All right, I'm gonna go eeny, meeny, miny, mo to see who has won this prize. This is awkward because I have to press your screen and move things. Uh, all right. Marilyn Nell mentioned the bundle that's available. All right, so Marilyn, congratulations. You've just won yourself a Wi-Fi extender, a laptop bag, and USB key rings. All right, so a, a big thank you just before we bring on our last set of speakers if they would like to come on stage so long. Just a big thank you for Dell. Once again, Dell is one of our, our biggest sponsors for this event, and what they're doing in education uh, with technology is amazing. Um, we've just kind of uh, fallen in love with what they're doing. So they said, listen, can we come on and share a couple of things? Uh, so we're like, please, we'd love to see what you have. So Dell, thank you for helping make this event happen. Uh, we appreciate your support. Uh, for all the schools out there, once again, massive thank you. Um, from their side, just, yeah, just to be able to do this is thank you to them. So schools that you are aware. All right, next up, 
uh, we have got another teacher uh, who's actually going to do something on coding and robotics. So um, I'm going to invite Willem de Toy on stage. Willem, are you there? I think you are sharing your screen because I can see myself multiplied on the screen. Um, and uh, Willem is from St. Dominic's Priory. Are you there, Willem? Yes, there's Willem. How yes, are you, Willem? Yeah, hello. Hi. Hi. Brilliant. Yourself. Good. I'm good. Thanks. Cool. So, um, Part of what we've realized is a hot topic at the moment is coding and robotics, um, how it applies in a school, how you roll out. So we really, once again, wanted to show you solutions that the schools were using. So we've invited Willem on stage. Willem is going to share what he's using, why he's using it, why he chose it. And then afterwards, we'll bring on some of the industry experts that helped make it happen. So Willem, the floor is yours. Over to you. Thank you. You're seeing my uh, presentation and you can hear me. Yes, we've got you loud and clear. I can see coding and robotics. Your first slide up, uh, it's looking good. All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for this opportunity to listen to me. I know it's a little bit tough to uh, be online at this uh, time of uh, Tuesday afternoon, but I'll be quick. So I, I would just like to quickly give a little bit of background. I'm a grade seven teacher and I'm also teaching coding and robotics for grade four to seven. And for the last couple of years, I've been um, in charge of coordinating 21st century sort of skills and education um, at my school, which is here in Port Elizabeth. And I would just like to give a little bit of backstory. We came quite a long way when we started first with one-on-one -on -one devices in 2016. Um, it was sort of a gradual rollout because we didn't want to overwhelm everyone. So we had two grades per year and we started off with basically just using the textbooks on, on, on their devices to, to enrich their learning. And we also then started working in Google Workspace um, where we moved everything over to Gmail and we started using Google Docs and, and, and Sheets and all of that. And then the pupils still attended separate computer literacy classes, which was basically focusing on MS Office and, and the like. And then we realized, well, we have a problem now because the daily device usage actually showed us that the kids needed to learn how to use these devices and um, because they would have to interact with the content on there. So then we decided to timetable a, a lesson we just called e-learning and we spent time with them on their devices, showing them how to create things on their actual devices. Um, we started using Google Classroom. Uh, we uh, wanted to get them to work in sort of a collaborative cloud-based environment and then eventually um, after a year or so the e-learning lesson became a, a coding focused lesson so we actually built it into our timetable there are schools that do it as like an extramural but we we decided to just um while the kids are at school that's what we're going to do so we realized that we had a need for a curriculum because in the past couple of years, there was a, an enormous amount of resources um, and most of it's like overseas type stuff. So we um, decided, you know what, they, for us to curate these lessons and, and get things to work because I'm basically uh, in charge of um, grade pre R to seven. Um, it's just an enormous task to, to do that. So, we wanted to take a direction and um, imp basically uh, pilot a, a curriculum. So before I get to that, why should we do coding and robotics? It's, I feel like for a lot of people, it's like a this sort of abstract concept, but it's a really, really nice subject to actually teach. It addresses a lot of the skills um, that we need to develop for, for, our, for our people to survive in, in like a 21st century uh, job environment and the Department of Education has um, said that they would like to have this as like a full-on subject that's part of um, the grade R to 9 curriculum. So it's very unique but it is amazing how uh, coding and robotics can basically cross-curricular integration, it, le it, le it lends itself a lot to that. Um, in each phase, 
phase, foundation phase, intermediate phase, and senior phase, there are different focus areas, but basically what you're looking at is pattern recognition, algorithms, robotic skills, and then something that sometimes falls by the wayside is the internet and e-communication skills, how to be a responsible digital citizen, how to share with care, um, how to manage yourself in a, in a very online environment that these, um, these pupils are uh, growing up in. Um, so then we discovered uh, school coding, SA school coding, and they helped us to uh, employ sort of a, 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 a curriculum at our school that um, focuses on the different phases and it's sort of a progression, a progression uh, between, the, between the grades. So what they offered us was um, a full on curriculum that's basically uh, more focused towards the South African context. So it's, there's a CAPS working document at the moment and they have workbooks for grade R to three that we also purchased. It's, I have an example that I'll show later. And it's CAPS aligned and as some of the activities are sort of un, what, what's called an unplugged activity. So they don't actually need any hardware or a computer that can uh, recognize the pattern and get, to, uh, get working towards the basics of, of coding. Um, and then what's really great is we are a Google school but they, they can help you to work in Microsoft Teams or in Google Workspace. So the environment's familiar to us because we've been using Google for many years and um, it's set up for you with like a lesson plan that shows you what you should do. What I specifically like is that there's a separate teacher's guide. So if I'm a little bit unsure about this specific thing that I need to uh, approach now, I can just go there and there's usually a video or a decent explanation that's just aimed at teachers to, to make them feel a little bit more comfortable before they go into their coding and robotics classroom. Um, then they also provided an, a, a decent amount of training. I mean, I've been working in Scratch for, for a couple of years now, but I learned a lot of new things. And we also, we're in a sort of a group together with other schools that are in the same boat. And uh, we collaborate together, share what we're experiencing, share new ideas. And you can literally send them a chat message and you don't wait very long and you have your answer. So especially for us where it's like not new, but it's new for us to follow a set curriculum where there's meant to be progression um, between the phases and, and the grades. So here's an example. It's a screen grab from Google Classroom. And this is from a grade three uh, Google Classroom, if I'm not mistaken. So they don't throw away, the, the curriculum doesn't throw away the, the regular computer skills like how to uh, type, how to do word processing, how to work in Microsoft Office, parts of the computer. It's still built in, but the, the Google Classrooms are set up. This is the teacher guide view where it literally tells you, go to the textbook here, uh, check this, this is the activity that you want to do, this is what you need to ask the kids, this is how you can scaffold it for the kids that are not um, so uh, adept at understanding the coding and uh, aspect of it. And uh, you, if you work through this, then there's a separate um, a Google Classroom that is aimed specifically at the children. And then this term, uh, we started in full force. So this is a little screen screen graph from the from the textbook. Um, it's actually a, also a workbook they work in that textbook and they are busy developing for grade four upwards as well, which is great because uh, it, it really enriches the, the whole thing. Um, here's another example of a Scratch Junior activity that they had to, uh, to do. This is from a grade one book. And it explains everything there. And then before you take them to the actual computer lab where they have to work in this, they can first see it and you can, can make sure that they, they know what to expect. Uh, this term, we did a, a little project that I made a screen recording of in Scratch, uh, where this is for grade seven child, a grade seven pupils example. Basically, what they had to do is they had to write code for a little game that they had to uh, uh, design, 
where their superhero catches stars and there's a little score counter in the top left corner and it might, it looks like the, the superhero is flying. When you press, press the space bar key, it does a little fancy sort of twirl. I'm hoping this video plays okay. So there you can see it's even the superhero is even introducing it, uh, itself and, and, and what it does. And as it catches the stars, um, the score increases. And that's that that took a, a few weeks. But the, when they see the final product, Project in action, it is it is really something for them, and I'm pretty sure that I've covered everything except the hardware. So we also purchased these Edison robots through um, through school coding um, because we want the kids to be able to you know write a little bit of a, a script and then um, put it onto this robot and then see it in action like go forward turn left or whatever the biggest uh, issue that we've had in the past with these robots is that they need a usb and if you're a school with ipads then you can't connect your robots uh, through usb but these edisons work with an auxiliary cable so you just plug it into your your sound uh, of your device and then you add it into your edison and it, it carries over the code it also can sense its environment, which is quite a, a nice thing to have if you want to write code where if you in, encounter an obstacle, reverse for two seconds or whatever the case may be. And uh, we decided to, to invest in these devices that we also got um, through SA School Coding, and they will be seeing their code in action when the time comes. And that's me. I think I've covered my, my time. I don't know. Like a dream. I uh, love it when people keep to time. Willem, thanks so much for showing us uh, what you do. I think it's so cool just yeah, coding and robotics. I wish I had it. I wish I could make people fly across screens. Um, I'm going to invite um, Sean. Uh, there's Sean on stage already. Uh, maybe, Willem, just one thing. If, if, if you could give a tip to a teacher who is not uh, a coding and robotics teacher, Someone who's just in the classroom um, as a, uh, a teacher that hasn't yet used code, coding or robotics or, or looked at introducing anything into their class, is there a tip you would give them, like a starting point or a thought or something that uh, might help them go, okay, I could use this in my class? Well, uh, you don't really need uh, like fancy infrastructure. Like if you're going to work in, in Scratch and Scratch Junior, those are offline activities, so you don't actually need internet connectivity. Uh, it, it does help if you can work in the cloud, but um, I think to start is to just realize that it's not it's not a, a, the robots you see in the VW factory. It's it's really coding and robotics. Is if you get if you get the gist of it, you it's really it's such a it's such a fun subject to teach because there are a gazillion possibilities of what you can do with code and starting them off in scratch is actually a good starting point because you don't have to learn all the in parentheses and in brackets and in this and in that. It's the code is written for you. So you just need to teach them about sequencing and problem solving. Okay, I've done everything I wanted, but my character is not doing what I wanted to do or my robot is going in reverse gear. Why is that? And they need to go back to the drawing board. So just jump. That's what I would say. We came right. for the past couple of years uh, it's not something that will happen overnight, but just jump in and, and start. You don't even have to start with little robots. You can just start in, in Scratch or, or any other uh, coding platform and just get going. Willem, thank you. I think, yeah, just try it. Um, I think as we saw from yes. previous session, some of the kids will actually help you. All right, uh, Sean, I see you on stage. Uh, one of the things we want to do is not only show your school using a solution, but more importantly, show you the companies that can help with that. So, uh, Sean, I'd like to hand over to you just to share about, obviously, you've helped film school and you can help other schools. So, can you give us a bit more about who you are and how you can help schools? Yeah, thanks, Peter. And thank you, Willem, for that very comprehensive overview of what you've been doing using our materials. Um, I'm going to pick up on the teacher training aspect of what Willem was talking about, because you know, we've realized that there's so many teachers are new to coding and robotics. 
and they really need someone to hold their hand and just help them navigate getting started with it. Um, so what you should be seeing on my screen is our teacher training guides. So those workbooks that Willem was talking about, each one has a corresponding teacher's guide, which contains everything that's needed to be able to present that subject in your classroom. So nothing, and nothing sharing on our side? Are you sharing screen? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing a message that says, please grant browser access to screen recording. Mm. Maybe that's on my side. I think that's on your side. Um, okay. I think just while, while Sean is sorting that out, I think the, the, the team from SA uh, School Coding, I, I think they, they are there as a support for you as a school. So I, I think he's going to be showing you some of the resources that you can pick up and, and use. Um, John, are you having any luck? Should I give away a prize while we wait? Yes, yes. I'm probably just going to have to restart my, my session and then I'll be back. Okay. While he's doing that, we've got some prizes to give away. So I love giving away prizes. So, uh, um, Lorato, are you still on stage? If you can jump on, you've got some air tags to give away. Oh, there's Lorato. Okay, so I asked Lorato to choose out of the comments of the favorite apps that you're using. She needed to choose one of the comments, um, and that person is going to win some air tags. So, Lorato, who is that Drum winner? Roll. Drum roll. And these are all awesome, awesome, awesome apps. CapCut came real close, but the winner is Samira Khan for Canva. <laughs> All right. That is the new favorite app here. Yeah. I mean, we had a wonderful EdTech cluster the other day at Rodine and Canva was the hot topic. It's the hot topic everywhere and it's free for educators. So I would highly recommend everybody sign up for Canva. It's absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Thank you for doing that. Uh, and interesting enough, tomorrow one of our speakers is Matthew Haynes and he's going to be talking about Canva. So that's yes, absolutely perfect. Yes. So join us tomorrow. All right, uh, Moritz, I see you on stage. You're also part of SA School Coding. So while Sean is um, getting his stuff in place, uh, would you like to, oh, there we go. I think you've pulled up something there for us. Would you like to share with us for a little bit? Moritz, are you there? Moritz, you are muted at the moment. Uh, Moritz, if you alt tab and then just unmute. Moritz, can you hear us? Moritz, we can't hear you. Did you just plug your speaker in? And this is from the, the tech company. Can you hear us? <laughs> we got nothing on this side. All right, we've lost one with no sound, lost one with no screen. Uh, Sean, are you there? If not, um, Lorata, you uh, maybe Moritz, try click uh, unmute there. Let's see what happens. All right, uh, Moritz, I advise just pull your headset out. Uh, often that works. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, while Moritz and Sean sort themselves out, do you, Can you hear me now? Ah, there we go. Over to you, Moritz. Right. Thank you, Peter. Um, technical issues here on our side with some debugging we had to do. That's part of problem solving coding and robotics, Peter. Wow, um, so everything well. in the back end, not always running ship shape. Um, so my eyes start. Yes, just while you're doing that, Moritz, um, if you would like more information on what Willem presented, please, there is a poll. Just click on that poll at the top there. It will say, um, would you like to be sent more information on SA School Coding's amazing coding and robotics offering? If you click yes, it means we can allow Moritz and his team to share the information that Willem shared on and how they're doing it. So please just click on yes if you'd like more info. All right, Moritz, back to you. So, um, Peter, yes, I just want to say thank you to Willem also for his presentation. It's awesome when you have an uh, excited client and school um, participating and joining on the coding journey and then sharing it also with the community and it's also better having someone else rave about your amazing service and products than you trying to do it yourself so um, what i quickly want to touch you know i'm trying to get a certain message across and dell made an awesome presentation where they 
say that the client and the school, they take them to heart and want to assist and support. And we are on that exact same mission. And what I quickly want to show you before Sean comes online is we've got a digital coding and robotic solution for our schools. And here I've just dotted in some numbers. Um, if we have, for example, 750, uh, let me just cancel all these calls. Quiet now. Sorry about that. Oh, ah, tech, you see. Ah, okay, ring in the background, it's beautiful news. Yes. Keep going, you're doing great. Keep on going. Um, I'm trying to get there, yes. Right, so. Um, just doing so many gears at the moment. All right, so I'm going to try for Pete's sake. Uh, for my sake, that's for my sake. Uh, right, no, here we go again. again. So just to show you our budget estimated that if we dot in 750 students for your particular school, there's the grade level, there's the number of school fees, and our workbooks, as Willem explained, for the great art to free the solution that we've got here. And for this particular school, we've got 33,000 would be the cost of the workbooks. Sean, thank you. All right. So we've got 33,000 for the workbooks and the licensing cost of 130 Rand. Now, this is where things get a bit complicated when I try to explain it to schools. So what's the magic? It's 130 Rand licensing costs. We say that if you can start a coding club at your school, we will subsidize this license cost by 50%. So instead of paying 130 Rand per child, you're going to pay 65 Rand per child. And if I just do this quickly again, so from 131,000, we subsidize you to Let's click on the yes. We subsidize you to 82,000 Rand. Now, this is what we require. A minimum of 31 children taking part in an extramural coding club at your school. 31 students from 750 students. And in most cases, uh, we have a waiting list at schools for our clubs, um, the, the children sign up, the parents sign up, we've got an online store, a shop where they lock in their details. And these are for the children who really have a passion for coding and want to learn more. During school time, we, we cover the basic syllabus, but as an extra mural, we go more in depth in certain concepts and principles. Um, it's small classes and the children greatly enjoy it. And the advantage to the school is it funds your in-school program. So basically, by just having 31 kids in your coding club for an extra mural, so two sessions in a week, and you're going to pay a startup cost of only 27,000 Rand. Now, this is where it sounds more like a very mark ad. So from, if we do the no over here, so from 131,000, we drop the cost that if you have 31 children in your club, you are only going to be liable for 27,000 Rand. Promise you, that is it. And maybe you are very skeptic and say, oh, but what if I don't have 31 children? What if I only have 20 children? Well, you're paying the difference and the difference is 17,600 and there's your total. So it's really a no brainer. You can make contact with us. We can get your school to coding. You will have your training that Sean will share a bit more about. Caps aligned curriculum, everything. Maybe you want to tell us that you don't have any devices. Then we've got a free year solution for you as well. So here's our Chromebooks. You select your device. You choose from our list of devices available. You want, for example, 50 in your school and you're going to choose our payment term, 36 months, the number of users, the same, the 750 students. The monthly payment will now be 16,000 Rand, but the price per child per year is then 21,000. And look at this beautiful amount. The price per student is only two Rand per month. I mean, that's not even a 
a packet of fritos. Not that I know what that costs anymore. It was 30 cents when I was at school, but less than two rand. Then you have a device. Robots, our Edison robots that Willem uh, spoke about. The Again, 30 robots for your classroom. The creator kits paid over six, 36 months per student per month. It will work out. Uh, I've got my children. Oh, that's too many children. 750. Just plotting all those numbers. It will cost you four rand per month for your. This is actually four rand per year. Wow, that's even better. This is an error. This is my CTO made error. Yeah, this should be per year. That's even better. So four rand per year for a robot. Now, hello, four rand for a year per child for a robot. I mean, that's great. So please make contact with us and let's get this country coding. That's right, my song. It. Moritz, uh, my favorite comment of today, uh, Lindsay Hart says, Moritz, if this was a very mark ad, you would need to add statements. But wait, there's more. Um, but oh, I think wait, you did there's add more. That. Oh. <laughs> I, I was done. concerned about plagiarism, um, Pete, and maybe get sued by um, them. <laughs> uh, uh, and I love it. Malachi was asking about the robots and affordability, and he's just commented, now, never mind. I see the robots are affordable. So at four yes. rand, incredibly affordable. Um, Moritz, uh, once again, everyone, if you want more info, if you actually want to see this budget calculate, et cetera, please fill in the poll. Um, Sean, are you ready to share? I think we've got eight minutes or five minutes. We way over time, but if you've got five minutes to share, Sean, are you there? But wait, there's more, Peter. Can you hear me, Peter? Yes, we can hear you. And can we but wait, there you? is more. <laughs> so if you choose school coding as your supplier of coding and robotics, you also get a fully blended learning solution, which means that for every student workbook, there is a full teacher's guide available, not only in English, but also in Afrikaans. How amazing is that? And we also have SACE accredited training. So here is our digital technology for teachers course. And we are taking teachers through a crash course over one month. We're going to take you from zero to hero, and we're going to help you to learn how to teach about technology, to teaching with technology, to teaching through technology. You don't need to do 160 hours of training, just four Monday nights, two hours every Monday night for a month, and we're going to take you through a series of lessons and we then are going to give you some projects to do. So you can see here is the beginner project. Sorry, John, um, you, you're not sharing anything. When I'm it rains, sharing. it pours. I'm so sorry. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm going to try Lin again. Lindsay asks, we how do we enroll in this I course? Uh, Lindsay, I think no. just to answer your question, how do you enroll in the course? jump on the poll and uh, click that you would like more information. What they can do as part of that information is they can send you the course info uh, and they could share this, uh, this uh, fabled presentation that is somewhere out there, just not in front of us. Yeah, unfortunately Funny, my, my share is not working at the moment. Um, perhaps Moritz can just share a screen and just show us the digital technology but for I think, teachers. Um, Sean, I think just talk us through it. And don't worry about the presentation. I think it'll be easy if you just tell us about it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, no, no problem. We've got a great team. So what we've done is we've put together a digital technology for teachers course, which will train teachers on how to use the resources that we provide. It's a SACE accredited course, and it runs over one month, which means you can put your whole team through our course in one month and after the first workshop you will be able to start delivering those um, those lessons with your students and um, so Moritz maybe just go down to the projects topic towards the bottom and open up the 
beginner project. And in the beginner project, we showed teachers how to use Scratch Junior, which is typically the software that's needed for the foundation phase. And there are a couple of hand-ins. And if we have a look at Willem's hand-in for that uh, beginner project, he recorded a video using Flipgrid. Um, so his project is down on the left-hand side. There we go, right at the bottom right. So we'll just play his video for you and show you what he came up with. Maybe make it full screen, please, Moritz. No, we don't want the immersive reader, so come out of that. Just play the video and make it full screen. I don't know if the audio is coming through for you, but you can see here that Willem has taken a Scratch Junior starter lesson and just using the Scratch app, he has put together a whole story. He's coded up some engagement and interaction between the characters. And this was his homework after the beginner workshop. He, he then had to use Flipgrid to record a video while he was sharing his screen. And now you can see how his characters are interacting in the story. So now having done this as a teacher, he's in a very strong position to do this with his students using the activities provided in the student workbooks. So that's a great example from the beginner workshop. If we come out of that one and we go and have a look at the intermediate workshop, we then showed teachers how to use Scratch. And we taught them how to use Scratch using another medium called Edpuzzle. And Sean, sorry, just to give you a heads up, uh, one more minute left. We have a hard stop at five. So. No problem. So have a look at one of the submissions that have been graded on the intermediate project. And you'll see that um, if you go down to the bottom left, you'll see one of the videos like Unet. If you have a look at Unet, you'll see that she's actually provided a bunch of feedback. And this is a self-guided course, which is great because it means that teachers can actually learn how to use Scratch, which they need to teach their students in a self-guided way, it's auto-graded. They do it from the convenience of their own home. And at the end of the day, they've learned how to use Scratch. They're learning how to use the Google Classroom. So it's a fully interactive, um, engaging medium. And then the very last one was the advanced course where we then got them to develop a fully fledged lesson plan and they now can take their lesson plan and use it in their classroom. And we'll see that teachers are just amazing people. You just give them a little bit of direction and encouragement, and they bring all their energy and effort to bear. And remember, this was a course that they did after hours, mm -hmm. which included homework. All and right, Sean, sadly, I'm... Uh... I'm going to have to cut you there, I'm sorry to say. Um, but the good news is lots of people are saying, how do I get this course, et cetera. So please jump onto the poll. I think what would be great is also you can visit the exhibitor booth. Look for SA School Coding. Sean and Moritz um, will be available. So you can pop any questions. You can get their contact details or, um, or fill in the poll. All right, um, Sean, thank you so much. We just appreciate it. Um, uh, I think, uh, and wait, there is more. Uh, it is affordable. Um, I think one of the people here said this is a great pension job. So I know there is opportunities for the, um, to, to get trained and get equipped. Um, and I think also just to get ahead of the curve, you know, coding and robotics is becoming a huge thing in this country moving forward. Uh, and we need it. We need to see our learners going out with these schools, with these skills. Golly, end of the day, these skills. Um, so, Lorato, are you there? If you're still on stage, you can jump on. We've got two prizes to give away. Um, one I'm quite excited about is a player of pluckies, and the other is a wired headset. But, uh, Sean and Moritz, thank you so much. And thank you also for what you do within the education.
Do we have a Lorato or not? No Lorato. All right, I'm going to give away some prizes. Um, okay, this is going to be, it's the end of the day. It's the end of a long, long day. Um, and this prize, I think, is going to be most suited for a guy. Um, so guys, are you on your keyboard? Are you ready? Or ladies, are you on ready for a guy you might know? Um, we have a pair of pluckies up for grad. Um, so I mentioned uh, a, a brand name that is linked to some shoes, some leather South African shoes. If you can mention their brand name, you are, there we go, golly. Uh, Henrika Kronier, you've just won yourself or uh, someone in your life, a pair of Feldskun plackies. And they are awesome because they actually say plackies across it. So well done. Uh, and I'm shocked to see so many people so quick at, at the end of the day. So um, you have just won. You were first on the draw. So uh, well done for winning that. And thank you again to Feldskun. Uh, and then we've got a pair of two things uh, before I mention that. Um, one, we'll see you tomorrow at three o'clock. Uh, there are a lot of exhibitors, um, companies that have solutions that are built for schools um, on the platform. So if you would like to go on and check them out, if you go to about 18 of them and like them, comment and enter their deals and offers, you go into our grand prize. So we have a, um, a visualizers, we have a hundred thousand rands worth of value from this company, uh, a whole pile of things, even a tablet, uh, full on tablet uh, from the guys at Toshiba up for grabs. So please go into the passport competition by visiting our exhibitors. And the aim is really just go look for solutions, go visit the school coding guys, find out what they have on to offer, ask them some questions. Um, and that means you go in. And then we have, um, I love Heidi says, you know, you're South African when you know what blackies are, well said. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have one last, we have a, a headset. Uh, sponsored by Parrot that is available. So wired headset, I use them often in my office. They've got like a mic. They are pretty cool. Uh, they make you feel like ground control to Major Tom. So I need to ask a question. Uh, simply but I want you to put down in the chat bar who your favorite speaker was from today. Just write in their name. Was it Lorato? Was it Loops? Uh, was it Willem? Uh, who was it? Just shove their name in and then I'm going to go eeny, meeny, miny, mo uh, to choose a winner. Uh, and that's going to be our last prize for the day. Oh, look at that. I see we got Lips or the Capitals. Lorata all the way, still as a favorite. Um, Lorata, Lorata is coming through a lot. Um, I'm so glad she could co host with us today. Lorata, are you still there? If you are, please jump on stage. Okay, I am going to draw one winner. And I'm just closing my eyes and going up and down on the screen. And I'm going to point Caroline Anderson. You have just won. I just got to write your name down. Otherwise, I'll forget. Uh, you have just won yourself a headset. Uh, so we'll be in touch to share those. But thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, we hope you found some new solutions used by real schools. That's our heart, is to introduce you to real solutions. Uh, one last thing from my side, I feel like I'm now the very mark guy going, but wait, there is more. On Friday, we have a physical event in Joburg um, that happens at Galleria near Woodmead. If you are in Joburg and you would like to attend, we have a couple of tickets available. Uh, our virtual sessions are pretty much full. We can't take any more people. But if you would like to come meet some of these companies you've seen in person, uh, mix with your peers, we're going to share a link now to our um, Schoolscape Premier website. Go on and you can either join us for the afternoon or morning session. Once again, it's free. Uh, there's going to be lots of cool stuff, lots of cool prizes, coffee, food up for grabs. Um, so that link should be coming through. There it is. So please jump on. And then other than that, we will see you tomorrow for some more speakers uh, from Canva to New Tech, a whole pile of other stuff. So jump on and join us tomorrow at three. And if you missed the beginning and you missed Lorato or Loops the session, you can watch it on demand. All right. Over and out. Thank you, everyone. And uh, once again, thank you for being the awesome teachers you are.